mean, let's face it, there are very few nations in the world who are really tight with Israel. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of people in each country who are very unhappy with their treatment uh, of the Palestinians and their desire to go uh, to war against Iran. Uh, you know, normal countries don't do that. I mean, I think the man who's running the country is insane. He's a sociopath and a psychopath. He's nutty as a fruitcake. I mean, read the uh, information that's just come out recently from his psychiatrist who he had the psychiatrist locked in the cellar of his own home and then Yahoo had a party on the above floor in his house. And supposedly the psychiatrist committed suicide. I don't think so. I mean, these are the kind of people that are running countries. I mean, you know, look at George Bush. Do you think he was sane? Hardly. The same thing with Obama. I mean, these people are all weird. They're not normal people. No, they certainly are not. Um, we got questions coming in from... Let's see. This is from uh, Zambia, Africa. Uh, the gentleman, Zambia! The gentleman who sent us and made us trillionaires. Well, he probably uses kwacha. <laughs> um, and that's their currency, incidentally. Presumably you are familiar with the U.S. government Iron Mountain Report, wherein continual warfare was promoted as a means of government retaining powers and as a form of eugenics. The World Health Organization program of CODIS, New World Order Maneuvering, and the Agenda 21 Implementation, uh, to name but a few against what Obama stated that he is not worried about his next presidential election. Is it possible that there is some planning afoot for a massive plague about to be set loose instead of the major major war you see coming? Why is Obama not worried about his next presidential election? Well, maybe he knows uh, how to outpace viruses and uh and bacteria is, uh, maybe he has a special neutron shield like Superman had. I mean, yes, we could have epidemics deliberately caused by government. Absolutely no question. And it's part of population control. There's no question. I mean, there's so many instances of it. They're yeah, doing away with DDT and half the people in the world uh, get bit by mosquitoes and they have malaria, de dengue fever. I mean, you know, these things uh, don't just happen. I mean, look at all the people with AIDS. It's all government. They want to get rid of people. Too many people. They like to cut 60 to 80 percent of the people in the world. That's all in that report. He's absolutely right. In fact, he doesn't live far from the uh, Zimbabwe border, if I remember correctly. Well, he also includes, Bob, when the neighboring country of Zimbabwe withdrew their hyperinflated currencies from circulation, it zeroed all bank accounts. The country woke up in the morning with their bank accounts emptied by the state. All businesses mm -hmm. and people started with a clean slate and brought out the dollars and rands, which the day before had been illegal to possess. People did buy items with raw gold nuggets and alluvial Dust. And that's true. And you know why they allow the Mugabe's of the world to function? And why A and ANC is left to do all of the terrible things that they do in South Africa? It's because they want the population down. If, you, if they pick up the paper and they say, it says uh, there was a riot and 50 people get killed by the police, they think that's terrific. you got to understand their mindset. These people are nuts. I mean, I've been reading this stuff that they've been publishing for over 50 years. 
And so with the gentleman from Zambia says, that's absolutely correct. He's done his homework. What do you think the economic outlook will be for Sweden? They have elections coming up in nine days, and, and so far their economy and currency have done well compared to the rest of Europe. Yeah, I think they'll continue to do okay. And uh, I don't know how they do it, but they do. Uh, I think they'll slow down like everybody else is going to, uh, especially in the Eurozone. You know, they had the advantage of having uh, the Euro go down against the dollar, which made goods very, very cheap versus uh, U.S. dollar-denominated goods. And that's why they had that three or four month revival here. But it's ending now uh, because the uh, uh, the euro is uh, selling around 127, not 119, but then again, not 150 either. So they picked up, I don't know, 15 percent, 12 percent, depending on the point of products, 10 percent advantage in trade. I mean, look at the Swiss; they're doing very well. Better than the Germans are. Why do you think their currency is almost one to one? And he also has another statement here, and this is you and I might disagree on this one, but he oh, I I disagree already. <laughs> he has Boy, is it a good thing we're not married? <laughs> <laughs> well, disagree one time that's not so bad. Um, <laughs> He has gold and silver coins, and he wants to know if he should sell any in order to buy gold shares. No. It all depends on how much you got. Oh, my gosh. We and do you agree. have tickies, or, you know, what do you got there? We agree. For those of you who don't know, tickies are little silver coins that they used to use in, in uh, northern and southern Rhodesia. And northern Rhodesia became Zambia. And later, uh, Zimbabwe came from what used to be southern Rhodesia. And they used British coins. And uh, one of them was called a tiki. A little tiny silver coin. Here's a good one. You might need the whole program or you might be able to do it real short. But I agree. I would never sell any physical gold for any other investment at these point in time. You know, if you have fresh funds, that's something different. You know, if you have disposable income, you know, because, again, we often relate to... you got to diversify, my child. I mean, we recommend silver bullion, gold bullion coins, and mint state numismatic graded coins. Mm -hmm. So you have a fan there of three different approaches... Mm -hmm. Absolutely. to the gold silver syndrome, and you should add shares to that in some percentage that suits you, if it, if it suits you at all, because there's, there's more leverage there in the shares than there is in the greater numismatics. But wouldn't you consider them a little more risky also? Because the greater well, the course. leverage you have, the more risk you have. But, but look, at, look at the spreads that can develop in, in numismatics, too. Even bullion coins. We saw that here about, what, nine months or a year ago when the spreads of bullion coins were ridiculous? What was it, $80, $90 a coin? They're still up there. No, they were 120 on the one point in time, you know. And I remember selling gold bullion coins for like $10 over spot, you know. So they have changed. Wholesalers are, are really haven't brought down their premiums at all. But um, Well, their excuse is, that they're afraid they're going to get caught outside. Caught that's right. That's right. And and that's why they, 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 yep. they're gouging everybody. Yep. There's no question. And then the retailers get on top, and they try to gouge, too. I mean, there's people like you who charge 5 to 10% on uh, graded numismatics and 3 4 5% on... on uh, on silver and gold bullion items, and as other out there, they're charging 50%. Yep. It's awful. Hey, I run into people every day. Bob. My commission on gold bullion is lower than that. But people get confused. There you go. People get confused with percentages over 
spot versus what a what a, 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 a retailer like myself gets. And my percentage is a lot lower than you know. It, it runs a little less than three percent on gold bullion coins. But yet everybody relates the spot, and they they figure that on. So there's a big difference. In fact, my wholesalers make forty five bucks over over uh, spot. They make forty five dollars. I make thirty five. So they they make ten dollars more than me. <laughs> So, and you do all the work. And I do all the work. You know, and yet I And you just sit there with a pile of coins in front of them like they were in a poker game. And yet I have some people that, you know, say that thirty five dollars is, is too much, but yet they'll go and they'll they'll try and save a penny here and a penny there, but then they always call me and say, You know what? <laughs> it took me forever to get my coins or this happened or that happened and Oh, I never got them. But there are some dealers out there that, you know, do strictly online selling. And, you know, they will sell because they do base it all on uh, volume. And But they don't do programs. They don't help their customers. It's like, you know, this is what I have. You tell me what you want to buy. You know, so there is absolutely no service at all. And uh, uh, certainly delay in shipping and, and so forth. So there's a lot of caveats that can be involved when you're trying to save, you know, a few dollars. Here at Discount Gold and Silver, you always know what to expect. I mean, everybody gets treated the same. Everybody gets the same price day in and day out unless my wholesale prices change. And uh, you'll always know what to expect, either on the buy or the sell. When you're ready to sell, it works the same way. And if you buy from somebody else, I can't lock in the prices until I see the material. I can estimate it for you and give you some sort. And if it, it arrives in that same condition, then I can honor the price. But uh, I cannot literally lock in the price on a sell if you buy the product from someplace else. But I'll guarantee you I pay more than anybody that I know, and especially my competitors. I pay a very good price for product to be sold back. And, I think and that's very, very key. You know, people don't realize that and uh, it, it's so important. It's just like, you know, these people, these circulated numismatic coins, they're marking up 30 or 40 percent because they're free, uh, free 34 coins. They go to sell them, and they get, a, 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 you know, 5 or 10 percent behind spot. What, what kind of a rotten deal is that? And I hear... I hear competitors say, well, we don't charge a commission. If you buy the coins from us, oh, yeah. we don't charge a commission. How do you know? <laughs> they're just going to well, tell you they're not charging a commission. Well, monkeys don't swing from trees either. Yeah, I mean, it's <laughs> absurd. <laughs> well, I'll tell you one about the brokerage business. You know, you have all these discount houses. Oh, we'll charge you $10 a ticket or $20. What they don't tell you is you go and you want to buy 10,000 10, shares of a stock at 60 cents. And the stock is 57 bid, 60 offered. They buy the stock on the bid. They give it to you at 60. They take the three pennies, then charge you 10 bucks. They've already made three points on you, and they don't have to disclose it because it's a principal transaction. But it's just as bad. It's the same thing. It is the same thing, and it's it, it is. You know, I even had I even had a and it's a, a big dealer. I know everybody knows them. They were comparing prices, and they were actually saying that they they were charging them like eight percent commission, but yet based on their wholesale price, that was actually like fifty dollars higher than mine. I said, "Well, that's just great. I'll just I'll just buy mine all day long and sell it back to them," you know. And it, it, it but people don't know. People don't know this, and they really take these people at their word. Because of where they advertise it, and, and they take so them to the cleaners. Who represents them? So, you know, anyway, give us a call at eight hundred three seven five forty one eighty eight.